Hey everybody, Smart Silver Stacker here. Just a quick video for you here on this holiday weekend. And today I wanna to talk to you about the price of diesel fuel and why in February it is likely to be moving much higher. And I also wanna talk about the impacts that that may have on the gold and silver market, specifically in March when we get the inflation numbers for February. So today we're gonna to dive into the numbers a little bit and I will give you my forecast for the diesel price and what that means for the precious metals. So let's get to it. Thanks for tuning into today's video, everybody. If you enjoy it and you get some value from it, please do give it a big thumbs up down below. Consider sharing it with your friends, and while you're at it, why not subscribe to the channel? And today's video is brought to you by silverbotanicals.com, household and personal hygiene products that are powered by nano silver. Check them out with the link down in the description, and don't forget to use coupon code STACKER to save 10% off your order. Okay, so the reason that diesel fuel may be moving higher here in the US and also in Europe in February is because Europe has a ban on finished Russian petroleum products, so refined products like diesel fuel, like gasoline, like heating oil, that's gonna go into effect in February on the 5th. And so according to this headline that we just got today from Reuters, Europe is rushing to stock up on diesel ahead of the Russian ban. Now. This is different than what we had been hearing in previous months. This is a headline from back in September where they were reporting, and it was true at the time, that Europe had been reducing their Russian imports and trying to look to other places like the Mideast and Asia. And according to this data here in this article, you can see the share of Russian diesel was falling. In July, it was 60% of their total diesel imports. In August, it was 51%. And then in September, it had dropped down to 44%. So still a significant portion, but it was on the decline. But that's actually not a trend that has continued. And here's another headline from today about Europe boosting their diesel buying ahead of the ban. Now, the reason they're doing that is because the leaders there and the energy companies there that are responsible for providing fuel to the populace, they understand that this ban is likely to lead to higher prices and possibly shortages. Now, shortages doesn't mean that there won't be fuel available. It just means that, you know, it might be a little trickier to find and also it'll be a lot more expensive. And if we go down to the chart in this article, this shows the European diesel imports from Russia up until December, and you can see that September was kind of a low there from the July numbers, it had declined, but then in October, it started moving back up. And in November and December, it actually moved even higher, December being the month of the year when Europe imported the most diesel from Russia. And it's because, like I said, they're trying to build up their reserves to try to stave off any shortages or higher prices for as long as they can, you know, get the cheap fuel while it's possible. Obviously, this has some implications for inflation in Europe and also the price of fuel there, but it could also have some significant implications for us in the US. Just take a look at this headline from oilprice.com from January 6, Europe imports of US diesel and gasoline to hit two year high. Now they're referring to the imports from the US in December, which hit 660,000 tons. The fact that that went up in December should be a little alarming to us, but keep in mind that in February, when the ban goes into place, likely this number is going to go even higher, like much higher, because they're gonna have to make up for all of that Russian diesel that they've been importing. In September, you saw it was 44%, and then it went up from there. So in December, probably more than half of their diesel fuel coming from Russia. Well, again, they're gonna have to get that from somewhere, and a lot of it is probably going to be coming from the US. And so that means that we could see some much higher prices and potentially shortages in the near future. Now, if you'll remember, back in October, we actually were faced with a situation where the amount of diesel fuel that was in the pipelines in the US, so from refiner to distributor, there was about 25 and a half days of total diesel supply available. And so that's how they measure it. You know, from some of that stuff's in tankers, some of it's in storage containers, some of it's in gas stations and end distributors. And that was pretty low for the time. Seasonally, that was very low. Now on this chart, this is a long-term chart. You can see that's the dip right there where we went down under 26 days. Now it has come back up a little bit. And we can go down here and look at the data. And you can see there was about a three-week period 
in October when diesel inventories were below 26 days. And since then, it has come back up. The latest numbers we have from January 6th show that we had about 32.4 days. So we've come back off of that drop that we had in October. But we may see these numbers dropping even lower than where they were in October once this ban by the EU goes into effect. And also, there's going to be another factor that is weighing on US diesel inventories and also gasoline in inventories. And that is the percent of US refineries that are being utilized at the moment. And you can see that for the second half of 2022, pretty much the number stayed over 90%. It did dip down a little bit in October, but for the most part, these refineries were operating near capacity. But then at the end of December, so just a couple of weeks ago, we did see a decline. And that was as we had those unseasonably cold weather in the final weeks of December there, that kind of polar vortex thing that was descending across the nation and everything was freezing, a bunch of the Gulf oil refineries had to close. And so there may be a little bit of lag in these numbers. Remember the last numbers that we got were from January 6 in terms of the amount of fuel that's available. So now we're about 10 days past that. It may be that the inventories are already slightly declining because of this lower refinery activity that we had at the beginning of January and at the end of December. But again, the big thing is going to be that the exports to Europe are going to increase significantly. Remember, this fuel is an international market. So if the supply from Russia gets cut off to Europe and the US, then that means the total supply available to those countries is smaller. And some of the US supply is likely to go over there to help make up the difference. And there are talks, I've heard some folks talk about doing like export controls and stuff like that, but that is very unlikely to occur because the Europeans are already kind of taking it on the chin for the US and it would be very diplomatically and politically negative to cut them off from US supplies of diesel just as they are implementing this ban on Russian oil, kind of at the behest of the US and as the EU and the US act in unison to sanction Russia. And so it's very unlikely that we'll see any kind of export ban. And I'm not saying we should see that at all, it's just that, you know, there's going to be a lot less diesel to go around. So we should all be aware of that and the fact that diesel prices are likely to go up. Now, why does this matter for gold and silver? Well, let's talk a little bit about inflation first. First, we can take a look here at the prices of gasoline and diesel fuel from the EIA. And you can see with gasoline this week, we've actually seen a bit of an increase from the previous week. But year over year, the numbers are down. So that had a lot to do with why the inflation numbers for December declined by 0.1%. You can see in this release from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the index for gasoline was by far the largest contributor to the monthly all items decrease, more than offsetting increases in shelter and food. Now, the energy index decreased by 4.5% over the month as the gasoline index declined. But now, in February, if we start exporting more gasoline to Europe, along with the diesel fuel, we may see that some of that inflation relief is going to go away. And keep in mind, the releases from the SPR now are over now that we're in 2023. So there's going to be a number of factors kind of coinciding here to drive up energy prices, specifically distillate fuels like gasoline and diesel fuel. Now in diesel, it's kind of the other story. Right now, we see a slight decline week over week in prices. But if you look at the year over year numbers, they're still way up. And in most places, diesel is still above five bucks, or at least it kind of averages out. In some places, it's down below five. Some places, it's over. But it's a lot higher than it was last year. And this can have some significant impacts on inflation because diesel fuel is used in so many areas of the economy. You know, the trucks that deliver food to the stores, they run on diesel. Uh, if natural gas runs low, power plants switch over to diesel. So diesel is a critical component of our economy and it touches a lot of goods. And so a big increase in the price of diesel could lead to higher inflation numbers. Now, this is all gonna be playing out in February. So when are we gonna notice this? Well, probably on March 14th. That is when we will be getting the February numbers for inflation from the BLS. And if we see a higher inflation print for February released on March 14th as a result of higher diesel prices because of more exports to Europe, that actually could have a bit of a dampening on the precious metals. Because one of the things that we've seen in markets, one of the dynamics is that most of the price action is being driven 
by anticipation of what the Federal Reserve is going to do next. And so when we get the lower inflation prints, investors tend to think that's going to give the Fed more wiggle room to slow down their rate hikes or potentially uh, pivot in the near future. Whereas higher inflation numbers tend to make investors believe that the Fed is going to persist with tighter policy for longer. Of course, there's a lot of factors that go into inflation. It's not just energy prices and it's not just exports, but this is one thing which I think could have a significant impact on those inflation numbers for February. And as a result, maybe we'll see a pullback in the price of metals. Now, if we do, I would view it as a buying opportunity. I believe that the metals are extremely cheap, even at today's prices, even after the run-up that we have had. You can see they've had quite a good three months here on this three-month chart over at SD Bullion. At silver rising from under 19 bucks now to about 24.45, so quite the ride that we've had. And I don't know if this is going to persist until March or not. But again, if it does, and if we do see that higher inflation print, I would expect at least a temporary pullback in the price of the metals. So take that for what it's worth. It's not financial advice, of course. I'm just kind of giving you some speculative forecasting here based on some information that I'm observing. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think that this ban? on diesel imports by the EU, diesel imports from Russia, do you think it could have a significant impact on inflation or not? I would love to hear what you have to say. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay safe and happy stacking, and I will catch you next time. Smart Silver Stacker, out.